Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best 90s music video. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Best 90s music video. I don't know what that was supposed to be. That was great. It was almost like a pop-up video or like one of those. You know what I mean? It was like, (laughs) it had that kind of like, coming up next, what's number six going to be? Did the spin doctors (laughs) kick vanilla ice out of the lineup? (laughs) I saw the spin doctors. The first time I became aware of them was 1992 or Mm -hmm. 91. I was out here in Los Angeles. The first time I ever visited, we went to see a taping we went to see two tapings. We went to see The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Uh-huh. And we went to see The Dennis Miller Show when he had his late night talk show. Sure. His attempt to be yeah, Carson. Babe. Yeah. Yeah. Babe. It's like Hercules went to the Paragon. And the Spin Doctors were the musical guests. And they They're so princes. good, dude. They're great. Pocket Full of Kryptonite is an album that I wore out. Yep. Yeah. So good. Every song on that was a banger. And one of the first things that I was excited, one of the first like licks from a song that I learned yeah. was from What Time Is It? That opening, the... <laughs> that was like the first proper lick. I was like, I can do the Spin Doctors. Did you reach a point? I feel like I did at some point where I realized this album is like the same song 12 times. Sure. A I felt the same song. way about Ace of Bass. Yes. That one song they did all those times was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It all works. Uh, as as the like 90s the one song. hell. Yeah, the 90s are a great time. You wanted to do this. I did. Tell the kind people out there listening why you... Okay, the impetus for this is I'm moving a lot of things around in the apartment Mm -hmm. right now. And while doing that, I was getting tired and depressed and not in a good place from listening to just news constantly. Sure. I was like, boy, it is a bad idea to just have CNN on all day, all night. Correct. While I'm cleaning and doing things. Bad news. Uh, bad news. Total bad news. So I was like, I am going to find a YouTube playlist of 90s music videos. Okay. And it, I haven't looked back. I haven't turned back since. It has been so much fun reliving so many great music videos and just little moments in music videos Mm -hmm. that I had forgotten about. The lady kissing with the and leaving the lipstick print in the right now video from Van Hagar. Yes. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. just little moments that are stuck in my head from things that I hadn't seen in the longest time. So this was I just kind of. Of course, stopped cleaning and just watch television while yeah. standing in the middle of the room holding a microfiber cloth <laughs> and some pine saw, just not moving and watching the TV. <laughs> um, because here's the thing. Harvey Danger's lead singer is a charismatic dude. Sure. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that the guy, Wannabe by the Spice Girls, that's one long shot. Yes. I mean, it's great video. It's a great. I mean, I don't know if it's on your list or not. It is. So I thought what we should do. I texted Hal and I was like, let's do best 90s music video. And he was like, done. Yeah. And I love these because they're unlike when we do an episode about a movie series or a television series or some bit of pop culture. This, I'm not going to lie, was pretty easy to research because Mm -hmm. all the greats to watch the whole thing. Five or six minutes. It's almost like I've been watching a short film festival. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. So obviously there were promotional videos made for music before the Beatles were sending stuff to Ed Sullivan from the UK. There's evidence of the music video being born before MTV started in 1981. Mm -hmm. But in 1981, you have this great like two or three year period where people are really figuring out. Like, what is that? This is a new medium for us to work in. Mm -hmm. And then it gives way to, uh, well, let's get all these people in and we're going to make these short films. So you have stuff like Thriller and stuff like Goonies are are good enough where it's like a short film. By the time we get to the 90s, and this is really the, not the, I think the death rattle is probably the early 2000s, but now we know what this format is. Mm -hmm. So you had these people like Michelle Gondry and Spike Jones who are going to go on and make incredible movies. 
movies. David Fincher. For David Pete's Fincher. Sake. Yeah, that's like they go from commercials to making music videos, mm. and then by making music videos, they all of a sudden have a calling card of like, this is my unique style. Yeah. So I have. I remember buying DVDs. They put out these like best of Spike Jones, best of Michelle Gondry. DVDs. I remember this, and it's just their music video work. Yeah, and I had one that I thought like this is definitely the this is like sneaky the best maybe the best video ever made in my opinion. Oh, just is this on how your good list? it is. It's not on the list because it came out in 2003. Ah, uh, there were a couple that I was like, mm-hmm. that was 89 or that was 01. You know what I mean? Yes. What was it that came out in 03? It's Star Guitar by the Chemical Brothers, which is obviously just mm-hmm. music and it's like, it's got a beat to it, but the entire premise is you're looking, you're on a train looking at the landscape pass you by mm-hmm. and it's got this like, doom, chick, doom, chick, chick, doom, chick. and every time you hear a beat, there's a structure that's associated with that beat that you see. Great. So it's like a girder and it gets to a point where it's like, you just see it like a bunch of times. So it's, if you're not keyed into what's happening, mm-hmm. it still makes sense to your brain because when things are cut to rhythm, it makes, it's just like pleasing. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's like nulling or like when, sure, like when your windshield perfectly. wipers uh, go to the song. Yes. Or when the Microsoft logo or DVD logo hit the corner. Exactly. It didn't happen very often, but Did it ever happened. I never saw it. I feel like there's video of evidence but it might be doctor. i think that's mandela effect that it yeah. ever actually happened but you were hoping for it you know sure of course feeling. i was hoping for it so it's it's a brilliant video but it is not in here i do i have a list of 22 we don't have okay. to talk about all of them sure because i think there are going to be some we have in common but i have a big i have a very important question going into this yes what is the question first of all what i have in front of me is not a list of favorites of mine mm-hmm. i've tried to do a quantitative list oh, okay in that what i have found i found in 2001 mm. uh so it was just after just at the after the end of the 90s in 2001 mtv put out their greatest 100 music videos of all time okay so i've got the 100 greatest music videos of all time specifically the ones from the 90s yeah within that i've watched all of them i've also got some personal favorites obviously i went with the rolling stone top 10 of all time there's a mm-hmm. lot of crossover within those yep and then all also, uh, the winner of the VMA for best music video throughout the 1990s. Okay. So looking at, I just have been looking at where the Venn diagrams cross over with all three of those. And there are a couple that are at the top or near the top of all of those lists. Okay. Then I have an idea of maybe of one way we might go about Great. this, which is I will throw some out that I have on my list and we'll mm-hmm. see if they land in your, I think something is going to have to be on both of our lists to win. Yeah. The question is when it gets down to it, cause I know we're going to have a few finalists and I just want to get, I want to be prepped for it now because I want to pick stuff that I think fits that mm-hmm. is does the quality of the song. That's not a tiebreaker. It's really just how well made is the video, right? And it's hard to separate them because there are some like one that maybe I'll throw, I'll throw one out right now, which is virtual insanity by Jamiroquai. Yeah. The music is so threaded into the video because he's dancing along to it. The mm-hmm. entire room is on a turntable. So he's going up on the ceiling and up on the walls. I seen that's how they did. And they had the camera going with the room at the same speed. Mm-hmm. So it looks like he's moving like back yeah, and it's forth. Inception in style. And the floor is moving as well. Yeah. All of the furniture yes. is, there's all kinds of. I thought it was a, is it a turntable? Is it, I didn't know if it was no, a turntable or if it was, I think a they treadmill. are treadmills because he's getting, he's but getting it can go in and, multiple directions. Yeah. It's a brilliant video. It's a great song. Yeah. Jameer Kwai is kind of underrated mm-hmm. for how good he is. Like just every, that, that's not even virtual insanity is probably his best known song, but it, it's not even his, like he has songs that are better just to listen to his catalog and he's yeah. still going. But that video is one that stands out. The artistry is superb. Mm-hmm. It was fresh at the time. And it really caught like a cultural moment where everybody put their attention towards it. Mm -hmm. And it's also a really good song. Does the quality of the song really matter there? I think, you know, it's funny. I'm not a huge fan of that song. Okay. The song feels a little, uh, to me, I, I, and that's just personal taste. Yeah. Which I think is interesting that you're like, does, I thought you were going in a different direction. I think you want to say, does the quality of the song matter? Mm. Because that Jamiroquai video is amazing for a pretty good song. <laughs> Makes it a good litmus test anyway, though. That's true. Yeah. I like the song. You don't like the song, but I think we would agree that the, it's a solid video. Yes. Is yeah. that on your list? Well, like I said, it is on these lists. Okay. A lot of these lists I found. A couple of them had Jameer quite near the top. Yes. It's weird that the couch bleeds at the end. Like well, the whole thing, everything's fine. And then at the end, you're like, 
Is that, but they do drop. Let's just talk about this video while we're, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. started talking. That's one thing I love about this Jamiroquai video mm-hmm. is. You're watching and it's, he's dancing and you're like, isn't that cool? The floor's moving. Oh, wow. He's, da-. there's a crow. The floor's yep. moving and he's dancing and he's doing all this. There's two black cockroaches and now he's doing all this fancy move. <laughs> oh, he's up on the wall. Now there's blood. It's up on the wall of the, and you're like, wait, what is going on in this music video as it just gets darker and darker, but in really fun, subtle ways? Yeah. I mean, it sort of feeds into like this virtual insanity. Yeah. Like it's just getting crazier and crazier and weirder and weirder. But it is, it was so inventive for the time. There wasn't really much like it. And I think it still stands up if we watched it now. Yeah. Maybe that's like, like I remember when Black Hole Sun came out by Soundgarden, mm-hmm. which probably is not on many of these lists. It it's might on be. a handful of them. Yeah. It's a really interesting. It's very disturbing. It was disturbing back then. Mm-hmm. I don't know that. I think because of the technology they were using to like elongate everybody's face. Yeah. I don't know that it holds up the same as the song. The song holds up beyond Black the Black Hole Sun is a wonderful song. Great song. The video is good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But it's not a great one. It's but not if a we're best gonna one. do guys with long hair in technicolor fields, um, then Blind Melons No Rain. No Rain is going to win that it's battle. It's gotta be a finalist, it's right? It's gotta be a finalist. It is who directed that? Who was I it don't that, know who directed that. See, I wrote down a bunch of the directors. I did not write the director of that one down, which bums me out. Um, but yeah, it was. You go ahead and look it up. While you are looking it up, if you have not seen this, it is the classic. You may be aware of the video with the girl in the bumblebee suit dancing around and following her sort of day in the life. That is what this song is. And it really, uh, a blind melon, uh, due to tragedy did not have that long of a life to it. But that video, again, was like a huge cultural moment. And it fits the song beautifully. Yeah. It's about just be just the life of a misfit. The life of a misfit. And what it means to – it's yeah, it's sort of like a hippie dreamscape, mm-hmm. life is going to be okay, misfit. And the girl that wore the bee costume in the video is now – I think I, – uh, what is she? She's just like living the, a regular life. As a regular person, she's successful in her career, yeah. and every once in a while, we'll put on the bee costume to make appearances at things. It's fantastic. Which is like the best version of famous that you can be. Yes. Is to be like, I just live my regular life. Everything is great. Sure, I'll throw on the bee. <laughs> yeah. You have a Clark Kent and a Superman, because people don't see you yeah. at the IGA and go, hey, are you the little girl in the bee costume? But also, she can do something that the kid from the Nevermind album cover cannot do. Because uh, if he shows up at somebody's swim party, he's like, all right, somebody put a dollar on a fish hook. I'm going to jump in <laughs> naked. He will. He would be in jail. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that. Yes. No. You, it's okay when you're a baby. Because it yeah. probably wasn't that baby's idea to get thrown in the pool like he's, that. Yeah. He's also He also has sued the band. I mean, obviously, it's a lot of trauma for him. He has to live with it. But for the girl in the bee costume, that's like a yeah. beautiful – it was a beautiful moment for her yeah. that she can continue to relive. And the video – it's an iconic video of the 1990s. Directed by Samuel David Bayer was the sure. director of that. Famous for the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Well <laughs> – he the Blind Melon video was better than the direct, Nightmare on Elm Street he, reboot. Yeah, he did direct the No Rain video, which yeah. is uh, more notable probably than the reboot. I want to talk a little bit about – because we are going to – I think we're going to bounce around a lot in this. Yeah. And I think there's a mini episode that we can have mm. right now within this episode. Okay. When we may even draw ourselves out some finalists oh. using this mini episode. And that is I want to take – Two prolific music video directors. Okay. And I want to figure out what the best video from each of those directors is. Do you know who those two directors might be? Spike Jones has got to be one of them. Spike Jones is one of them. Is Fincher the other one? Uh, or, no, or I Michelle only, Gondry. Michelle Gondry. I didn't have Michelle Gondry on the list. Okay. Uh, Hype Williams. Okay. Hype Williams, who directed Super Duper Fly, uh-huh. Missy Elliott's epic trash bag fish eye he's the he's the fish eye lens guy the hip-hop artist with crazy flashing backgrounds Mm -hmm. the best of his work on all of these lists and having watched them all recently it's tough to pick a best missy elliott super duper fly california love Mm -hmm. and put your hands where my eyes can see by busta rhymes which is the if you really want to party with me Mm -hmm. all three of those great the thing i love about this dude 
Hype Williams is that two of those music videos are just him doing homages to movies he loves. You know what I mean? Yes. Because uh, the Busta Rhymes one is he was watching uh, Coming to America and he's like, oh, yeah, let's just put Africa and let's do a, Af- a whole Africa in New York music video for Busta Rhymes. Right. Or and then, oh, I love Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Well, though, this one was Jada Pinkett Smith actually came up with this idea. Mm. But sure. Of course. Then he directs the Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome music video. Right. Like. He is blockbuster VHS music videos, <laughs> and he's, they're great. He's sweeting things for music video purposes. Yeah. Um, as well thought out and as beautifully crafted as the artistry and the visuals within that Busta Rhymes video are, mm. I mean, I don't think you can beat the And the Missy Elliott video as well, that is... Gave us that look. You know what I, I mean? Like that work it is maybe her best video and it came later. Work it came later. Yeah. yeah that was in the two, that was 2000. 2000 it was 2001. 2001. Yeah, yeah. Cause I checked. I was like, well, work it's the superior video, mm-hmm. but that was later. Yeah. I think you can't beat California love. I'm good with that. It is. I think that's an absolute finalist. It is an epic director at the top of his game. Jada mm-hmm. Pinkett Smith came up with the idea, which is a strange little bit of trivia. I just. It's so weird that it's Tupac and Dre, Dre in an eye patch, them yep. in this post-apocalyptic, and they do the whole story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it's so What good. a great song, too. Yeah. And it, it's such an incongruous song for this music video. Yes. But it is worthy of the song. I think that's maybe a piece of it. It's yeah. like, this is a great video that is worthy of the song. Yeah. Because California Love still... Still slaps. It still slaps. It still slaps. Continues to slap. I just think it's amazing that their dystopian town, that the one way they connected it to the song was like, uh, this is Oakland. Yeah. <laughs> they just have a sign, like a sign made out of industrial garbage that says Oakland. And you're like, okay, sure. Well, Apocalypse Oakland. Leave it to a guy, leave it to a guy from LA to do that. <laughs> yeah. Good point. This is what Oakland is. <laughs> Just a bunch of industrial waste. It's uh, but it's Burning Man. Yeah, yeah. All right, so if the other one is Spike, Spike Jones, Jones, it's got to be Praise You by Fat Boy Slim, right? Does it though? Why? What would you pick? <sighs> Sabotage is perfect. Oh yeah, I forgot that that was him. Yeah, Sabotage, Sabotage is Spike Jones. It is Sabotage because Sabotage feels like the movies that you wanted to make with your buddies when you were a kid. If you had access to a real car. Yeah. And your parents let you run across the tops of buildings. Yep. That's, That's what so it looks good. like. It's I praise you is they're both pure genius. Right. But it also is a graduation for them of sorts. Like the, if you track like the video history of the Beastie Boys, mm-hmm. I and mean, they've always been a parody group that some people got and some people did or a satirical group. Yeah. And Fight for Your Right to Party is sure. like a real fun video. Silly mid-80s goof around. But this one, first of all, Ill Communication is such a good album. It's a great album. And this is – this again, it was like everywhere. I remember it winning the VMA. Mm-hmm. And it also started this weird – like they have alternate personalities. Yeah, like Cochise and, uh, yeah. and the Chief – I don't think it's their best video ever. I think their best video ever is the really stripped down version of 3M Season 1 DJ. Oh, I but don't that, know that came video. later. Mm-hmm. It's Mixmaster Mike wearing this giant backpack and he shows up at their studio, their practice space studio was in like the basement of like a some walk up building and he gets there and he rings it and nobody answers. You cut to they have cameras set up in their studios. The three of them are in a pose, like holding – one's got a mic for they're doing mm-hmm. almost like a Charlie's Angel with their mics and not moving. They're looking straight ahead. He rings them again. They don't answer. Eventually, somebody leaves and he goes in. If The camera follows him downstairs. He walks into the studio and – Takes one record out of the backpack, puts it on the turntable, and proceeds to provide the backbeat to the entire song with just one, just using his crossfade and, and one and, record. And one record. And then they go into it. Not only is it an incredible video, we should watch it after this, but <laughs> it's not only incredible video, but it is the best version of that song. Cause yeah. the produced version is also very good, but this one is, cause it's on Hello Nasty, which is that really like heavy, like intergalactic planetary. Yeah. But this stripped down version is incredible. It is, 
It's alas, so though, Hal. But alas, it's in the 2000s. It can't You got to take sabotage. You got to take sabotage. Sabotage is, but, uh, but we have to give some props to, uh, wait, no, before we give props to praise you, another great thing that I love about the sabotage video, mm-hmm. there's that moment where there's the explosion. Yeah. And it's, the bit is that they've just edited in an explosion from some movie or TV show. Yep. There's the subtlest little, I guess, joke bit in that. At, and, and only living in LA and having this job for as long as we have, would this make any sense? Mm-hmm. Do you know what it says? Do you remember what it says at the bottom? It's obviously cuts to a VHS tape for an explosion because the whole premise of this is it's supposed to look like, you know, you're making a backyard opening for a 1970s cop show with your buddies and a camcorder. So you edit in an explosion. But the explosion they edit in down at the bottom, it says for screener purposes only. (laughs) So the idea that Whoever is the big kids that are making this, they're still of clout enough that they're receiving screeners. And in fact, so good. it's just Spike Jones and the Beastie Boys yeah. playing like big kids. Yeah. So the idea that it's a screener that they pulled it from adds an extra layer of dumb funny to me. So good. Yeah. Also, Praise You is not even the best Fat Boy Slim video I did. The best Fat Boy Slim video I did was uh, Weapon of Choice. I don't know Weapon of Choice. Weapon of Choice is... How? Stop adding things from the 2000s. I'm just is this from the 2000s? It is. It's it's just Christopher Walken dancing. Oh, yes. I do remember that one. Great song, too. All right. Uh, um, But Praise You is the early, early flash mob, and it's just Spike Jones doing his silly early stuff. Yeah. It's very great. good. Uh, all right. I'm going to give one more, and then let's take a break. Right. I used to watch... I might have told this story on here before, but you're going to hear it again, everybody. And some mm-hmm. of you were hearing it for the first time. As a kid, when I was like 12, 13, 14, my favorite show on MTV was Headbangers Ball. It mm-hmm. was midnight on Saturday, and you got to see all the heavy metal videos they won't play during the day. Yeah. And on comes this video, and and I'm watching it with my friend JP, staying over at his place, coolest basement. He had a phone booth in it, which I was like – I, I still think one day the two things that'll let me know I've made it are when I have a phone booth in my basement, like mm-hmm. an old timey phone booth, and when I have a room that is just model train city. Oh, does that old timey phone booth bring you people from the past? It might. Oh yeah, you actually can go. It was older than that, so it it, uh, it actually goes into the future. Ooh, the modern tele- telephone booth goes <laughs> into the past. This one, I guess that one went into the future. Anyway, point is, on comes this video, and I go, "Well, this isn't heavy metal." But they didn't know where else to put it. So within a week, it was already growing into the biggest video in the world. It smells like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Yeah. It's one of those videos you remember where, where you were when you saw it. Yeah. It changed the game for everything. Yeah. Do you know the story behind Smells Like Teen Spirit? Tell me. $50,000 was the price tag to make this. Mm-hmm. They shot it in a gymnasium with a bunch of Nirvana fans. And they kept them there for 12 hours. And they got them anxious and they got them riled up. So when they riot at the end of the video, that's because Kurt Cobain was like, okay, everybody, let's tear this place apart. And yeah, it is just the raw. It is pure grunge at its best. It's an answer to the stuff that was going on on MTV at the time Mm -hmm. uh, to the super slick, glossy. And we'll get to some super slick and glossy. Sure. I'm looking at you, George Michael. With oh all of yeah. Your, uh, with oh, all of your yeah. supermodels lip syncing. Gotta freedom. talk about that. But yeah, this is an absolute finalist and an absolute game changer. Yeah. Great video. Great song. Rose to create a moment. Defied description when it first came out because we didn't know what grunge was yet. Mm-hmm. 100% a finalist. Yeah. Let's take a quick break. Great. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk more about everybody's favorite decade that's being featured in this episode. We'll be right back. Are you tired of being picked on for only wanting to talk about your cat at parties? Do you feel as though your friends don't understand the depth of love you have for your guinea pig? When you look around a room of people, do you wonder if they know sloths only have to eat one leaf a month? Have you ever dumped someone for saying they're just not an animal person? Us too. She's Alexis B. Preston. She's Ella McLeod. And we host Comfort Creatures, the show where you can't talk about your pets too much. Animal trivia is our love language. And dragons are just as real as dinosaurs. Tune into Comfort Creatures every Thursday on Maximum Fun. Hi! 
Uh, this is Lori Kilmartin. And I'm Jackie Cation. And we have a podcast called The Jackie and Lori Show on Max Fun, and it's very exciting because what do we talk about? Comedy. Stand up comedy. We both do stand up comedy and have since the dawn of well, Christ. Well, Jackie. Is that offensive? It is offensive to me because you've aged me. <laughs> Uh, we started in the late 80s, and we're still here. You can't kill us. So go to the Jackie and Lori Show on Max Fun and listen to that. The Jackie and Lori Show. New episodes Monday, only on MaximumFun.org. Okay, before we jump back into talking about the greatest music video of the 90s. Yeah. Can we talk for a minute? Can we each throw out our most 90s video? Ooh. This, I'm putting you on the spot. I will go first because I have one. It is... Let me just go through what this video oh. has on offer. It begins with Macaulay Culkin playing his music too loud. So George <laughs> went, uh, knocks on his door, his tells dad. him his dad yeah. tells him to turn down his music. Yeah. Macaulay Culkin goes in the living room with double Marshall stacks and an mm-hmm. electric guitar mm-hmm. and back to the future openings. His dad by playing a loud note, blasts him across half the planet to Africa, right? to the Serengeti yeah. where there are four lions just sitting there. And, a tribe of African warrior hunters yes. looking for these lions that are sitting out there in the open. Mm-hmm. And then Michael Jackson shows up yeah. and begins black or white. He proceeds to go to Russia. He yeah. goes to the top of the Empire State Building. True. He goes to a stoop where Macaulay Culkin wraps yes, uh, the, the heavy bridge. D wrap in the, in the bridge. He goes in front of a green screen where behind him is playing footage of war crimes. And then at the end, a bunch of faces morph into other faces. Yeah. Michael Jackson, they call cut. It New backs technology. Out. New technology. Mm-hmm. And then Michael Jackson beats up a car and grabs his crotch in an extended 10 minutes that was subsequently cut from the music video for being obscene. The music video for Black or White yes. is an unhinged 90s masterpiece. It is pure bananas. <laughs> oh. Absolute bananas. Oh, I love I that remember... Video. It had its world premiere after we Living watched Color. It. We 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 oh. sat. Oh yeah. Oh yes. It was a point. I remember television. exactly where I was, and that was very controversial when he grabs his crotch. Because every end. kid in the country was watching, and it makes no sense. It makes no. no sense that the rest of the video, the heavy D rap is. I remember two lines. That it's not about places, it's about faces. And at the very end, he says, "I'm not going to spend my life being a color." And then it goes right back into my. The song's actually really enjoyable. The song's a song. great. It's a great song. It's a banger. And it's mind blowing because he used all those effects i would argue the better video made off of that album is do you remember the time which features iman and eddie murphy that's the egyptian one right he's the court magician Mm -hmm. who's brought in he's brought in to entertain them he obviously is falling in love with iman they're running off together eddie murphy is throwing but it was a huge deal at the time to have eddie murphy in it i mean that is i think a more coherent video if i'm going with most 90s this is one i had on my list but i don't think it's a winner I think I have to go with towards the end. Like, that's more representative of the beginning of the 90s. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the end of the 90s, too. Okay. It's going to be me by NSYNC, which is oh. the one where they're all Ken dolls. Yeah. And they're doing the puppet dance. Sure. The dance is still, like, if I could do it, I like, I picture it in my head. Ba 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 Yeah. And yeah. every May, they pull it out, and the members of NSYNC that are on TikTok <laughs> are doing it. To uh, Lance Bass in particular is very yeah. active on TikTok. He's so he fun on TikTok. Kid. So, yeah, really fun follow. But that's what he does. That for me and then did the thing where there's five of you. Mm-hmm. So it looked like the whole band. It is an iconic dance. Yeah. Because that was very big, especially in those boy band and Britney Learning Spears those dances. Players. The Well, the dance, like their signature mm-hmm. moves. Just like the oh, 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 like kicking the legs out, mm-hmm. the hanging or the right stuff rather. But it is very 90s. It's very 90s. So I would, that's, that's what I picked it's for the so, that's perfect. video. Right Great down video. to the plastic bleached tips on Justin Timberlake's curls. Yep. Yeah, that came out around the same time as Larger Than Life from the Backstreet Boys, right? Yes. It seems like they were dueling summer blockbuster music videos yeah yeah there are millions and millions spent on these contemporaries i want to talk about one i want to go to the exact opposite of that and i want to throw one out 
It's on every list. It's lower on the MTV list that came out at the end of the 90s than it is in retrospect on lists. Okay. And that's Sinead O'Connor's Nothing Compares to You. Have it on my list. The absolutely most stripped down music video you can do. Just her in black and white in a close up the whole time. I think if it wasn't that song, you wouldn't remember it. Yeah. You know? I, that's one that needs the, the song. The best song you look ever at it. Made, it's, yeah, yeah, it's just or, a beautiful song written by Prince, performed by Sinead O'Connor. I think it, not that it has to be flashy. I have another one that's also a black and white. The main thing is a black and white close up, which is Vogue, Madonna's Vogue. Well, that we're going to get to, I, we can get to Vogue whenever you want. Cause that is on the Mount Rushmore. If not, yeah, on the it's, top. I think that's up there. That's why I go to like black and white close up. I heard the Sinead O'Connor is obviously a very different vibe Mm -hmm. than what you get with Vogue, but Vogue again kicked off a cultural moment, which Madonna did several times in her, in her crew. When we do 80s video, which we'll have to do, she will also be, she's going to have a lot more on there Mm -hmm. because that was like the, she had two in the VMA winners. If you're looking at VMA winners in the 90s, she won twice. Is it that one? Is Papa Don't Preach the no, other it's one? No, that was the 80s. Uh, was uh, Ray of Light. Ray of oh, Which is basically like Koyana Scotsy. Yeah. The music video with shots of Madonna mixed in. It's just sped up life in the city. Yeah. Beautiful video. Yeah. The number of seasons she's had as a performer are unbelievable. Like over even just a 20 year period are unreal. And the videos reflect that from yeah. like, her initial identity as an idol to becoming an iconoclast to starting yeah. and like being like she just skirts the line between always controversial in some way. This is not as controversial at all. This is just great dance song and a great video for, for it. Vogue. I wonder if it's the same though. Would the what video be good without that song? Would it work with any other song? I think here is why I think. That music video is, in my opinion, at least in the top three. Okay. It's David Fincher at his Mm. early best. It is, I think it takes something that jumps into the imagination, which is house music while talking about vintage movie stars. And just that little snippet of the song to take that and use that to recreate iconic black and white photos, shoot an entire music video in the style of 1930s Hollywood glamour shots, do it in black and white, get some of the most beautiful people in the world in it. So you've got that as the saying the names of Hollywood movie stars and the house music underneath is the fact that you are inventing a brand new dance that's going to become dance floor royalty. Yes. You're filling the video with beautiful dancers of all what appear to be fluid genders mm-hmm. and just pure sex appeal in a way that you could only get away with it. At, the only way that Madonna could get away with it at this point at the top of her game. Yeah. And you know, there's that, those black and white shots at the end of where it's just the dancers doing that with their flowing clothes. And it's, ju- I think it is shot perfectly. It is a perfect marriage of song and art and video and visuals. And yeah, it's, yeah. I think that one is tough to beat. It's gotta be up there. I'm thinking two ways from this that I want to branch off into. I absolutely mm-hmm. a finalist. One is, I don't think it's a winner, but silent lucidity by Queensryche, that is black and white. I, I don't think, know that also. One. It's a really, it was a very popular song for a while. Mm-hmm. Also had play on Headbangers Ball, mostly because they were a metal band, but this was like, right. sort of like when Metallica started to transition from really hard music to more ballad stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful song. You would like the song. The other is, if we're going to talk about beautiful people who are lip syncing something on screen. Freedom 90. Freedom 90 is a, again, a landmark video, (laughs) not only like a brilliant sort of statement to have these women speaking for him, but also part of what propelled them into like, they were already becoming supermodels. This Mm -hmm. also helped propel them is there's a special, there's a whole series on the supermodels on those women Mm -hmm. that was made. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. It's on Apple TV plus very good, but it talks about them going to make that video and like just, it was obviously not as glamorous to shoot something like that as it is at the end, but it is 
one of the most memorable videos. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's all for those who don't remember that video. The George Michael does not appear. It's just supermodels yeah. in a looking like sort of a morning after or like of three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, they're in bathtubs. In bathtubs and like lace and like, yeah. or like just laying in the hallway, smoking a cigarette. Look, it's yeah. very noirish. Yeah. And they're singing the song Freedom. Yeah. And you know, he was famously shy, George Michael, didn't want all the fame. In fact, late in the music video, he takes the icons from the faith video and blows them up. Right. All the like, he's like, Oh, those are all the props from the faith. And he's blown them up. And yeah, it's just, and also, uh, the first time that the supermodels were not the object of desire in the video, but rather the protagonists of the video. Yes. Which was huge. So yeah. And it's everybody. It's Cindy it's everybody. Crawford. It's Christy Turlington, Linda mm-hmm. Evangelista, Naomi Campbell, like every name that you associate with that early crop of supermodels. Yeah. They're all there. And it again is a moment just as much as it's a music video. So. I don't know if it beats what we already have here, but it is. What? So do we have anything else that we think is as high up on the list as the ones that we've already talked about? I got one more. Okay. There are a whole bunch here. And there are, I have so many like honorable mentions. REM's Losing My Religion have is on my spectacular. Yeah. Tonight, Tonight, also Smashing Pumpkins, list. because I'm a big George Melier fan. Yeah. And also uh, the couple that flies to the moon in that is Jill Talley and Tom Kenny Aww. from Second City. So sweet. Yeah, isn't that cool? Still I thought that was so great. Together. They were shooting Mr. Show at the time when they made the, uh, the er, awesome. OG version of Mr. Show when they made that. That's so uh, good. What else you got? I have uh, Baby One More Time of Britney Spears. Classic. I have, ooh, what do I want to talk about? Oh, Been Caught Stealing by Jane's Addiction. <laughs> I love it. Fantastic video. Yeah. Wanna Be by the Spice Girls, which is like one shot in a hotel. In it's London. brilliant. Yeah. And it, again, it's one of those that follows them around the whole time. It's Birdman, the music video. Yeah. If you want another weird Michael Jackson video, I think Scream, his duet with Janet, is mm-hmm. really weird where they're in this odd like space world together. They're playing some weird version of Pong. Mm-hmm. He may be touching her boobies. As there's weird stuff going on. Look, it's it, the whole that it, it, he's not the he's yeah. not the paragon of Eisenhower era americana i'll give you two more that i think are iconic and then the one that i want to throw out as a finalist okay uh one is ironic alanis morissette where sure. she's in the car the different versions of herself yeah really really good simple fun cool you also can't talk about 90s music videos without talking about alicia silverstone and i Smith forgot and i was crying. gonna mention crying, crying crazy yeah. and amazing but yeah. crying is crying is the it's her and is it Stephen Dorff? Yes, that's right, Stephen Dorff, who's like her boyfriend in that that he, like cheats on her, leaves her. I mean, her dangling, dangling from a bridge, throwing up a middle finger, man. Yeah, that music video is great, so good, and it's also very like it's so nineties. You know what I mean? The clothes, the earnestness of the teen stars, mm-hmm. the music from Aerosmith, that album, get a grip is a, is my favorite Aerosmith album. It's really Cause that's good. the one that came out when I was a kid. So like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Is that the one that you also wanted to add to the finals? No, the one I want to add to the finals, you take a band that writes like just incredible earworm songs mm-hmm. and then the whole premise is that they're playing at Arnold's from Happy Days. It's Buddy yeah. Holly by Weezer. Buddy Holly by Weezer. It's so Spike good. Spike Jones as well, right? Yes. That is, that is Spike, Spike Jones. Jones. Yeah. yeah. It's such a good – first of all, the song is great, mm-hmm. but it also is uh, – the guy who played – not Arnold. That's that's Pat Morita. But mm-hmm. uh, the other guy whose name is Escaping Me who – who was Tom the, Bosley? No, not Tom Bosley was the dad. Yeah. It was the guy who worked at Arnold's after Pat Morita left. He was yeah. sort of the guy who was running it. Mm-hmm. He's in it. I think he might be the only one who's in it as himself at the end. But they may have just inserted something from Happy Days, but like the Fonz is there. It's just such a clever. It's like it's, the, it was really, really fun. The Beastie Boys is one version of let's make. That's like we're making a 70s cop show. Yeah. But with, with no budget. With, with no budget. This one is like a clever, we're part of happy days and we're the band playing there. The, yeah. Just as a piece, as a video piece, I think it's really, really strong. Yeah. 
I don't know that it beats. I would agree with that. The finalists, but it's, I just want to put it as a finalist so that it was there and then, then we can take it away. Well, I want to put, I'll put it up there and I think it's brilliant and a lot of fun. It's tough for me after talk, cause I had forgotten about that video, honestly, right. when we were talking about Spike Jones. Yeah. And I don't know if it beats sabotage in that no. sabotage feels like Spike Jones having that kind of fun, yeah, but with way less budget, and it feels more. It feels like it was more fun. Yes, you know what I mean. Buddy Holly's more clever and expertly yeah. executed. You want to observe Buddy Holly. You yeah. want to be in sabotage. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So, what would you say are our finalists? All right, I'm going to read off a few our finalists as I am gleaning them from our conversation. Can we talk about one more real quick? Sure. That showed up on a lot of lists. Okay. That I was like. Absolutely not. Nine Inch Nails closer. Correct. Oh, it's really, really well done. Yeah. But oh, it is. It would give me nightmares. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. crucify a monkey in that. Too, too one. scary. It's too scary. The who knew that the were a heart beating and steam shooting out of its metal valve. Yeah, it's not good. It's, it's very bad. I the other one I had. <laughs> the other one I had was "You Could Be Mine" from. Uh, the Terminator 2 soundtrack and from Use Your Illusion 1 by Guns N' Roses. Oh, there's how's there no gu- we didn't even mention he, he November Rain. The, I think he uh I don't I don't think that's uh, it's good. It's epic. I it could be most 90s of the hair metal band. Don't Cry might be a little bit better cuz it's got that weird thing where it goes into like hell maybe yeah. when he's holding that note at the end. It's very weird to see them in concert now. To oh, see cause, Axl Rose, because that is not like what. Ha- actually, he had like a medical thing, right? I think he doesn't. Yeah, he just doesn't have the same range that he used to, and no. it's really hard to do it any other. No, way. his voice was bonkers back in the yeah. day. Like what he was doing was there was no way you could, could sustain that. Absolutely, but it was amazing for the time. Correct. All right, so here are the finalists as I am gauging them based on our conversation, and you Go can ahead. tell me if I've missed any. All right, Vogue uh-huh. smells like Teen Spirit. Yes. Sabotage. Sure. California Love. Yep. Freedom. Yep. Freedom 90. Yeah. No Rain. No Rain. Yes. That's it, right? I think that's it. Okay. Should we just start eliminating or do you think we can agree on a top three out of those? Yeah. I think Vogue is in the top three. I think Sabotage is in the top three. And I think Smells Like Teen Spirit is in the top three. I think those are the top three. I think those are our big three. Yeah. All right. So very, very different music videos. Yeah. One that feels like a bunch of guys goofing around with a camcorder. Yes. One that feels like Hollywood glitz and glamour. Mm -hmm. And one that feels like a direct response to that Hollywood glitz and glamour. Boy, that's tough. It's very hard to separate these from the impact that they had on the music industry. Well, let's look at that impact then. I I don't think anything had impact on the music industry like Nevermind did the album and like yeah. Smells Like Teen Spirit the song and the video is an extension of that song the yeah. video everybody wanted to see it but they wanted to see it because they'd never seen anything like it before mm-hmm. Vogue is a killer dance track it took a dance that was created by I think a New York choreographer mm-hmm. which was Voguing he's it was created by someone else but then Madonna made it this movement it is a huge deal. It was everywhere. And yeah. sabotage also hit on, you know, this is like, this is like generation X coming of age, mm-hmm. right? Like the middle, like the, the, the tail end of generation X. This is the, the weird detached, uh, irony of the nineties. Yeah. And the beastie boys kind of cut right through it mm-hmm. <laughs> with this crazy, with fun, silly, yeah. like they know, they just knew, not only did they know how to write brilliant songs, just great songwriters and musicians too. Like they don't really get enough credit for how good they were mm-hmm. as musicians. Sure. Ad Rock is Bridget Everett's musical director now. Yeah. So like obviously like brilliant, brilliant musicians as well. Mm-hmm. They also were like the kings of counter programming in a way. What do you mean? Just like this is different than what you're seeing out there. It just feels different. This video has a different feel than anything else. Yeah. That's going on. Does it, you know what it feels like? It feels like if the nihilists in Gen X were saying the world is going to end. Yeah. The Beastie Boys are there whispering in the ear of Gen X going, then why don't we have some fun? Yeah. 
I just don't think anything beats smells like teen spirit as you a know what whole. I think here's why I think it's I uh, maybe video is better like it's not the best video it's not the best three. video but here's the question Ugh. It, it, there's kind of two there if if we it's one simple question yeah but there's a couple of different elements to it yeah it's the best music video of the 90s yeah I would argue that David Fincher's Vogue is a superior music video yep Absolutely in craftsmanship. Yes. I think that Smells Like Teen Spirit is the more of the 90s because it reset the 90s early on. This was 93, right? That Smells Like Teen Spirit came out in 92? Oh, this is like 91, 92. It was 91, 92. So it kind of reset the 90s and gave us the rock and roll movement, the grunge movement and the rock that followed and everything that was a response to that. So for being of the nineties, I think smells like teen spirit is the more important harbinger of what was to come. The question now is, do we go with an objectively, and I don't mean inferior to be loaded, an objectively inferior music video, right? whose song had more of an impact on the world versus, or do we go with a superstar icon at the top of her game with an up and coming soon to be huge movie director delivering a pretty perfect product that is seamless with its song. One is polished and perfect one is raw and trailblazing. Ooh, can I throw a curveball? Sure. I think Sabotage is the best video of these three. I think it's just the best video. Really? I think it's the- I don't think the, it's a better video than Vogue. You don't? No. Oh, I think it's more- I It's think better than Smells Like Teen Spirit. It's a better video than Smells Like Teen Spirit. I think Sabotage, we might be giving Sabotage more weight as being a better video than Vogue because we want to be in Sabotage. We want to be rolling across the tops of cars wearing fake mustaches. Uh, But Vogue is, I think Vogue is objectively, as a music video goes, mm -hmm. a masterpiece. I'm good with it. Yeah? Let's do it. Okay. People of the world, don't just stand there. Let's get to it. Strike a pose. There's nothing to it. Vogue. (gasps) I was going to look up the rap. I'm not going to do it. It's a waste of all of our time. You know it. You know the rap. Uh, if you haven't seen the music video for this, go watch it and explore all of these videos that you're hearing. Yeah. Share the ones that you like. The 90s was a really interesting time for so music fun. videos. A lot of fresh voices coming in. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, they took established patterns and blew them up and improved on them and just went in different directions. So it's a really cool time. Whether you like some of the songs or not, just watching the videos yeah. that were made is really interesting. But the best music video of the 90s, you heard it here first, is Vogue by Madonna. Director David Finch, 1990. Fincher. Fincher. Oh, it's, oh, it's Fincher. That's my nickname. That's not, that's not his nickname. He's not David Finch. My boy, directed by my boy Finch. Yeah, the Fincher. We call him the Fincher. Yeah, David Fincher. That's right. Doesn't matter. David Fichtner. Listen, asked and answered. David Fichtner, great job on Vogue. This topic is closed. Uh, there are many more topics to discuss, so please reach out to us via email at wegotthispodcast at gmail.com or go to facebook.com slash group slash wegotthispodcast. We can use links to videos to share videos with one another, and we should do that. Start a killer thread like only you can, kindest people on the internet. That's right. You can also find us on TikTok at we Got This Podcast and on Instagram at we Got This Show. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And don't forget, you can support Ken Plume at patreon.com slash Ken Plume. And of course, thank you to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, the people of the world, for giving us an opportunity. I don't know if we mentioned this at the beginning, mm-hmm. to sit down in person. Yeah, we're in a room together. We're in a room together, man. This is nice. so nice. To sit down... And talk about music videos and have a good time doing it and encourage each other to watch them. We've all got a short film festival waiting for us as soon as that thread gets going. And that's all thanks to you. So to you, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And don't worry, everybody. We we got got this. this. We got this. Maximum Fun. A worker-owned network 
of artist-owned shows supported directly by you.